Okay. Raise your right hand, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see you up here in the witness chair. Pull your chair forward as best you can and speak into the microphone. You can adjust it as you need to. You have time? Thank you. Ms. Bart, you know the defendant in this case, Ruby Brown? William Ruby Brown Jr.? Yes. Do me a favor. Sit forward closer to that microphone so we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, that was a yes? Yes. Can you tell me when you first met him? Um, February 2015. And did you meet him through work or socially or how? Um, both. Okay. Can you tell the court a little bit about that? Um, I was working at White Rose and for a round I did uh, get some drugs from him, so purchased cocaine from him. You were employed at Wacko's? Yes. And you said word around Wacko's yes. was that you could get drugs from the defendant? Yes. Specifically, were you looking for any drugs in particular? Yes. What kind? Okay. Now, I'm going to object to this line of question. I don't see any relevance to Ms. Barton's activities back in February when the state said they're going to be limiting the rule control to. I uh, understand the objection is relevant. Stage, what's relevant? Judge, I have to lay a predicate of context for her knowledge of the defendant before I get into the specific activities that we've discussed already. Yeah, I'll make you that. Thank you. So, your relationship began with him as you were a drug customer. Yes. Did it progress eventually beyond that? Yes. Right? Progress to romantic and were you actually living with the defendant? Yes. Did you actually, was there a point in time where you began, can you, can you tell us about when you started living together? May. All right. So would you have been living with the defendant from May all the way through it, including the period in July that resulted in his arrest? Yes. And during that time, uh, and I'm going to specifically just start focusing from this point forward, okay, on the period, say, between June, mid-June, say June 15th, and July 24th, okay? okay. But <clears throat> during that time, Were you aware of the defendant still continuing to be what you refer to as a source of narcotics? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about the types of narcotics? Um, yes. Okay. Cocaine? Yes. Um, Roxycodone? Yes. Vicodin? Yes. Morphine? Yes. Any others? I'm sorry, hallucinogenics? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and did he just give drugs to you or was there other people? There's others. Okay. Were you actually present when he would conduct these transactions? Yes. On more than one occasion? Yes. About how many even, on a daily basis, how many times would you say you knew about defendant purchasing or selling drugs? Objection on a problem once again. What's the time frame we're discussing now? I'm again beginning. This is the period between June 15th and July 20th. Oh, Overall. Um, five or more berries. Five or more berries? Mm -hmm. Kind of depending on the day, maybe? Yeah. Bigger demand on the weekends? Um, just okay. Okay. As it relates to this activity, uh, did the defendant have to maintain a supply of these kinds of drugs? Yes. And where did he keep that supply? Nightstand. Nightstand. In your shared residence? Yes. Okay. Who else lived in that residence with you? My two children. Your two children. How old? Five, four, five, one, and two. Okay. Uh, and this nightstand, where was it located? In the bedroom, inside the door. Locked in some way or any way like that? And these transactions, would some of them occur in the apartment? Yes. 
Yes. Would some of them occur around or outside the apartment? Yes. And would the children be at least present in the vicinity? Yes. Even if they weren't standing over? Would you occasionally be there with your children while the defendant was doing this? Yes. And you have actually pled guilty to child neglect in this case, haven't you? Yes. His honor is going to determine your sentence. You understand that? Yes. In addition to you being present with the children, were there times where the defendant was the custodian of those children? Yes. Where you would be somewhere else and he would have them in his own sole care? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. I'll leave the witness. Would there be times where you weren't around but the defendant would watch the children? Yes. And can you tell us, as far as these deals that the defendant was doing with, with respect to the narcotics transactions, what, would he use any particular tools or devices or anything to help facilitate those? Mouths, I think, I don't know. Cell phone. Cell phone? Okay. Uh, and when you say cell phone technology, in the form of what? Okay. And are you familiar with some of the uh, language that would be used to conduct those sorts of things? Yes. In fact, did you sometimes use this sort of language yourself? Yes. Are you familiar with some of the, some of the names of uh, the defendant, the people that the defendant would interchange and conduct these activities with? Some, yes. Okay. You think you know them all? When the defendant would have the children in his care um, and you were elsewhere, was there some sort of moratorium or anything on his activity or would he just continue as normal? Um, just normal day. Normal day? Yeah. All right. Um, and I understand that maybe you can't tell us exactly on what date or what place a when some of these transactions occur, but could I show you States Exhibit 1 and ask you about some of those transactions before I approach on it? You may. Thank you. Ms. Barton, I'm showing you what's been entered into evidence of States Exhibit 1. And you recognize that these are, if I were to represent to you, that these are text messages. Do you see these? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you know the names of some of these people? For example, do you know the name of the uh, person referenced here on page 3422 at the top uh, as Nerfit? Yes. Do you know who that is? Yes. Was that one of the defendant's uh, customers or drug sources? Yes. And you see the, the language in the commentary there next to it? Beginning with the words, I know, bro. Yeah. Okay. And you see the conversation that kind of goes back and forth here? Um, and including down here, do you see the next line, and I would reference line 32104, where there is a discussion here with a person named Josh? Yeah. Okay. Do you know that person? Is he also one of the people who the defendant would uh, exchange narcotics with? Yes. It says, got more 30s? Yes. Do you know what that's a reference to? Yes. What is it? Objection or speculation. Lay the proper record. Have you seen and heard the defendant use the phrase more 30 before? Yes. Do you know what that is? Yes. How do you know what that is? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the answer. I've used it also. And you've made that same reference yourself on occasion? Yes, sir. All right. Can you tell the court what it is, please? Morphine. Morphine. Is 30 a reference to the strength of that pebble? No, there is. Okay. Would you look down there at line 32106? Again with Josh. Or, I'm sorry, again with. This one says Jody Nerfin. You see that? See the end here that says, is that another person that we, like the ones we've been talking about, the defendant would change the deal to? Yes. 
This one's a guy named Roxy. Do you know what a Roxy is? It's a pill. Is that one of the narcotics? Yeah. Do you know the full name of that? Roxy Codone. Roxy Did the defendant deal with no substances as well? Yeah. Okay. Would you go ahead and look at line 32108, again with Jody Nerfett. Um, this is a response to him, or to Jody Nerfett. It says, all out, what's up with your script? Okay. Is that from the defendant to Jody Nerfett? To him? Okay. What do you mean, what does this mean? Do you know what that means, what's up with your script? Can you? Yeah. Okay, can you tell the court what that phrase refers to? Objection, speculation. Over. Over. Okay. Go ahead. Please tell the court that version first. Um, basically, so you know if he could buy a script, a prescription. So, explain to me how that works. Um, assume I know nothing about the drug trade, okay? When you talk about purchasing a prescription or, or purchasing pills from a prescription, how, how is it that the defendant did this? Um, pay for the visit, pay for the prescription, and exchange for the prescription. Okay, so the, the patient would have a doctor's visit, and are you saying the defendant paid for that? Yeah. Okay. And then to fill the prescription also would cost money? Yes. And the defendant would pay for that? Yes. And in exchange, what would the defendant get? The prescription. The pills? Yeah. Okay. And you know what you would do with them after that? <coughs> I'm sorry? Flip them to turn them. Flip them to turn them. Sell like I said, assume I know absolutely nothing about the dope deal trade, okay? Mr. Manti, uh, and I know this may require you walking back and forth, but unless you're referring specifically to the exhibit, if you could go back to the podium so that it will assist, I think, the witness in speaking up so that Madam Court Report can hear a little bit better. Yes, sir. Ms. Barton. If I ask you about phraseology like you got any more subs, is that also a reference uh, to these types of transactions? Objection, speculation. I, mean, I, I believe all of this calls for expert opinion testimony. This witness has never been listed as an expert in any field, including the drug trade, drug language that is commonly done by the state attorney's office in cases involving wiretaps and the interception of communications. No speaking objections, Mr. Boyle. I understand your objection. It's an overrule. I think they've laid the proper predicate. But Mr. Manta, I would ask you to remind the witness, Ms. Martin, please keep your voice up. I'm having trouble hearing you. If I'm having trouble hearing you, more importantly, Madam Court Report is having trouble hearing you. So please keep your voice up. I can adjust this perhaps, Your Honor. All right, I believe the question was about you got any more subs. Is that yes? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, is that better? Yes, sir. Can you tell me what having any more subs would refer to or subs? Subtitles. Is that also narcotics? Yes. Is the full name Suboxone? Yes. There are phrases, and I'll refer to line 32133 for this. Um, for example, in that conversation about subs, $15. Do you know what that's a reference to? Um, cost. The cost per pill? Yes. Um, and how about a request of two for 20? Is that a request for sort of discounts for buying bulk? Um, yes, officer. Okay. If I were to go to page thirty four ninety for the record, line three two eight three zero. There's a message from an Amanda Gloria that says, can you get some loud? Do you know what loud is? Weed. Marijuana? Yeah. Right. Did the defendant occasionally deal with that as well? Yes.
without belaboring too much the point, if I were to fast forward to page 4620, line 36356, there's a message from a Corky Mauricio. Is that also one of the defendants or the customers or the people he exchanged things with? Yes, sir. It says, hey, save me one of them M's if you still got them. The response is okay. What are M's? Morphine. Morphine? And then on that same page, line 36379, Yes. 
Yes. Courtney Mauricio? Yes. Jessica? Jessica Rodriguez? Yes. Jessica Trigger? Um, yes. Okay. And would those be also people uh, like those that we've discussed that the defendant would communicate about drugs that they're engaged in these transactions with? Yes. Go to page 3493, and for reference, line 32924, message from Jody Nerfa, and future reference, I get 30s monthly too. What are 30s? Either one of those might fit in the 30. Is the 30 reference again like you were you called it before to wait? Yes. Go back up to line 32917 on that same page. Guess you don't deal in anything other than bulk, was just hoping for a favor and would make worthwhile. Been around for conversations with that variety as well. Yes. And can you tell us the context of that one, please? Um, Charles. All right. Yourself. 
objection or cost for character evidence. Sustained. Had you done this on multiple occasions for him? Yeah. And I'm sure you got something out of it too? Yeah. Okay. You were living with him after all, right? Right. And was it in any way unusual for him to be conducting this activity while he was watching and in custody of your children? Objection on a call for character evidence. Over. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, obviously it's a, it would be a matter of simple logic that if you were not present, you don't know, you don't have personal knowledge as to what Ruben Ebron was doing, correct? I'm not there. You, didn't, you wouldn't have seen anything, correct? No. Uh, <clears throat> ma'am, on June 17th, 2015, do you have an independent recollection as to where your children were that day? June 1? June 17, 2015. Yes. Where were they? Um, do you believe we were at Hannah Park? All right. Do you have any personal knowledge of any drug deals that Mr. Ebron did on June 17, 2015? Um, not specifically that date, but I don't remember. All right. On June 18th, do you have an independent recollection as to where your children were? Yes. Where were they? We were at Anna Park. For two days? You were at Anna Park? It was my daughter's birthday. We rented a motel room with my parents and I. Okay. On June 18th, do you have an independent recollection or any independent personal knowledge of any drug deals that the defendant did on June 18th? Not that I can remember. June 22nd. Do you know where you're joining? Yes. Where were they? Um, we were in between my mom's house and Ruben's. What time did you get to your house from your mom's house? Um, actually, we actually left the motel and then went to my mom's house. That was Father's, that's Father's Day weekend. Do you have any personal knowledge of any drug deals that Ruben did on June 22nd, 2015? Um, no. Okay. June 23rd, 2015. Do you know where your children were? Yes. Where were they? You said June. June 23rd, yes, Yes, we were back at the house. Yeah, they were in the apartments? Um, yes. Okay. On that day, do you have any personal knowledge of any drug deals that really need to that day? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. On June 24th. Were the children still at the Ravenswood Apartments with you and Ruben? Um, I'm trying to remember. Their father got them some time after Father's Day, so I'm trying to remember exactly what they said. Okay, so, and please correct me if I'm wrong, man, but you are not sure whether on June 24th you and Ruben had kids or Chris Barton had the kids, correct? June, yes, that's correct. Do you have any personal knowledge of any drug deals that Ruby Ebron did on June 24, 2015? I was with him. Is that a yes or no? Do you have a personal knowledge of any drug deals from June 24th? No, not particularly that day. Yes, ma'am, and I'm just trying to establish the record as to what you might remember or what you might not. Same question, June 25th. Do you believe the kids were with you or with Chris Barton out of Bank County? Um, I don't Okay. Do you have any personal knowledge and independent recollection of any drug deals that Ruby and Brian did on the 25th of June, 2015? Um, not to any particular people, but this was something that was on a regular basis. So. Right. But you don't remember a particular deal from the 25th, correct? No. All right. Same question for June 28th. You don't remember any particular drug deal on June 28th, do you? No. Do you know where the kids were on June 28th, whether in Jacksonville with you or in Baker County with Chris? Um, I think they were with us. Between June, July 1st and July 2nd, 
were the kids in Jacksonville with you, or in Baker County with Chris Clark? Um, and you believe they were with Chris? And over those two days, July 1st to July 2nd of 2015, you don't have any independent recollection of any particular drug deal that Ruben Ebron did on that those two days, do you? Not a particular one. Yet. Leading up to July 21st and July 22nd, uh, the kids were here in Jacksonville, correct? Yeah. Do you remember any particular drug deals that Ruben Ebron did on those two days? Um, yes. Which ones? Rick Ball, working for one for Kelly, um, and also all coming over early that morning. Okay, yeah. this is, I don't mean to turn it right now, but Thursday would have been the 23rd. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about the 21st and 22nd. Which day was Brittany over, over at your apartment? Um, probably he said to stay both days, but I don't remember which day. All right, so she was there on the 21st and the 22nd? Yes, yeah, she came over regularly. Did you witness the defendant hand any drugs to Brittany Kelly on either the 21st or the 22nd of July 2015? Yes, I have. Okay. On which day was that? The 22nd and 22nd. Okay. And where, where did the defendant hand uh, Miss Kelly on that? Okay. And what did the defendant hand her? Pill. Do you know what kind? Peroxy. Okay. And how much did she pay for that? $30. Where were the kids at that time? Where in the house? Um, in the bedroom. Okay, so also on the second floor of the apartment, but down the hall, correct? Yeah. And you and Ruben were in your bedroom? Yeah. And is that the only drug transaction that you recall from the 21st and 22nd of July 2015? Um, that stands out vividly, yes. Okay. So, as you testify here today, that's the only one that you can recall and testify, being sure of your answer, correct? In front of me, yes. Man, Mr. Manti went over a number of text messages for with you and had you somewhat, you know, interpret or decipher these text messages. Uh, as you sit here today, can you testify that every time Mr. Ebron either received a text message or sent a text message that you believe to be concerning drugs, that a drug deal actually took place? Um, not every time he picked up his phone, but... So, that's no? You cannot testify that every time... Not every single time he used his phone, no. Okay, but concerning the text message that have drug talk in it, whether it's a reference to M's or R's or Morphs or what it, or does, can you testify that you have personal knowledge that every time a text message containing one of those words appears that a drug deal was actually done? Yes. You're sure of that? Yes, I'm sure. How are you sure of that? I live there. Okay. So how were you were you monitoring every one of Mr. Ebron's text messages? Um, pretty rarely, yeah. Okay, so even while you were dancing at Wacko's, you were monitoring the text messages that he was sending and receiving? Um, when I would get home, yeah, I would get those phones. And so how would you know that a drug deal actually took place if hours later you looked at his phone and saw these text messages? Um, I'm not going to ask him, did this person come by, did that person, and if he confirmed it, then he confirmed it. Can you remember any of those dates in which you asked them about any of these transactions? Well, like I said before, I lived with them, so they were pretty regular. Okay, can you, as you testify here today, can you specify any particular date that you actually did that? You questioned him about who came by to pick up drugs? Um, not a specific date. Thank you, Judge. No further questions. Anything else in the way? One question. All the days that you lived with and interacted with this defendant, how many days did he conduct zero drug transactions? Um, Another question. Anything else in the list? No, sir. 
Right, then would this be returned to the jail? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Give me one moment, please. Thank <laughs> you. 